Hey guys, welcome back. So in today's episode of Just Hack It, we'll be discussing how to choose the right flight controller for your usage. So almost all flight controllers are same, but there are some factors which will help deciding the right flight controller for your application. Buying the cheapest flight controller out there in the market will not give you a good experience because they compromise a lot in quality and you'll end up spending more money when that flight controller fails. Try going with a brand which are well known among the community so that later you can get help and support whenever you run into a problem. Don't immediately go for a new concept based flight controller because it's in its early stage and it is still needed to be tested by the community for its durability and reliability. Try waiting for the V2 version instead. Now let's move on to the next slide which is some basic knowledge about hardware which you must know before proceeding. One must go with F7 flight controller to experience D-Shot 600 with RPM filtering or F4 flight controller if you want to run D-Shot 300. In my personal opinion, I will say there's hardly any difference and normal users cannot tell the difference among the two. But still, if you are confused, just simply get F7 flight controller. You cannot go wrong with it. Now let's move on to the next point. Generally, 30mm flight controllers are more durable than 20mm and 16mm variants because margin of error is huge in 30mm while same can't be set for 16 and 20mm flight controllers making them less durable and prone to damage during the impact. Due to the large area of 30mm flight controllers they are easy to work with and repair and much more suitable for beginners. Make sure the gyro on your flight controller is MPU 6000 because right now it's the community standard and most widely used and tested gyro in the market. And also make sure the firmware you wish to run on your flight controller is supported by your FC. For example, there are many FCs which are not supported by iNav but are still supported by BetterFlight. 20mm and 16mm flight controllers are used by micro quads but racers use them on 5 inch as well to reduce weight and increase speed. Now let's talk about board and PCB layout. Having right board layout is must if you want to make a clean and easily manageable build. Well labeled parts on the flight controller allow easy field repair and reduces the chance of damage by incorrect connection. I feel like having camera pad at front along with 4-in-1 ESC connector and VTX pad on left or right side is the best pad grouping for clean build which can be easily repaired without disassembling the entire frame. Having flight controllers with direct solder pads for RX and VTX reduces complexity and saves up space. Some flight controllers having this feature are Pyrodrone F4. TBS Pod Racer, All in One, and Z's F7 V2. Moving on to next slide, we'll be talking about solder pad size and spacing. Having spacious pads makes soldering easy and enjoyable, and also having gap between each solder pad reduces the risk of bridging the pads together, causing short and damaging the flight controller. In case you don't understand, pad is that golden square where you solder the wire. Also, having the large pad reduces the chance of you damaging them during the crash or soldering because they have more contact with PCB, but all this comes at a high cost of manufacturing. Now let's talk about some hardware which is optional in a flight controller. TVS diode stands for transient voltage suppressor and it helps in reducing voltage spike and protects flight controller from reverse polarity up to some extent. Having inbuilt receivers like SPI Express LRS reduces amount of hardware and end-to-end -end latency of your RC link. Some of the flight controllers having inbuilt SPI Express LRS are Happy Model and SP Racing H7. Having dual voltage high amp PEC is a must if you want to run VTX at high output power and having dual voltage BEC adds flexibility to your build. And also don't forget to make sure that your flight controller is 6S rated. Position of gyro and processor. Having gyro placed incorrectly can cause a lot of problems such as EMI and noise affecting your flight performance, creating vibrations and jello. Gyro must not be placed at extreme end. Vibrations from nearby screws and wires which are in contact with gyro will produce false information which will be fed into the flight controller, again creating problems. And also gyro will be in risk of direct impact during a crash. Processor must be placed on top of the flight controller to prevent EMI generated by ESC from entering inside. Some brands supply EMI shield to prevent this from happening, but prevention is better than cure. Having processor on top side is very beneficial for cinematic smooth flying. Now let's talk about Mu Metal, which is now an emerging trend among flight controller and ESC makers. Mu Metal is an alloy which has very high permeability 
and prevents EMI from entering inside the processor and acts as a heat sink as well. Mu metal doesn't require grounding and not having it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. There is no strong evidence indicating it makes any noticeable difference for our application but still I'll recommend it for Cinevope requiring clean signal. Right now only Mamba Electronic has it in their flight controller. That's all for today's video. I hope you guys like this and in case it was helpful for you, please consider subscribing to this channel. It really helps me a lot. Thank you guys.